to one more lovely session of the grammatist. Let's look at this sentence and try to spot the mistake. And the... Let me tell you one thing. There is one thing, the problem that I find with a lot of people when they say, when they correct, I ask them, they say, sir, what is wrong in this sentence? So the first thing I do is this, I try to tell them, there cannot be anything wrong in a sentence. So if somebody asks you what's wrong in the sentence, you'll say, don't say what's wrong in this sentence. Say what's incorrect in this sentence. That's the first typical mistake that people make. Right and wrong is a moral issue. You can say, this is not the right behavior. This is a wrong behavior. That's a different issue. Correction is a state of correction of the construction of a sentence. Got it? Let's come back to the sentence over here. It says there is no place in this room. Now, is ghar mein koi jaga nahi hai tumhare liye? Ah, that's the mistake we're making. We're not talking about a place. We're talking about openness. So therefore, the correct thing would be there is no space in this room. Not a place. So how do we use the word place? For example, you can say, you have a very special place in my heart. That is a lovely sentence for that, right? Now, let's look at this sentence. It says, why do you need 100 rupees? That well, seems to be correct again. Now, these are the bloopers that I would really love to avoid. And the correct answer for that is, 100 rupees is not 1, 1, 1, 100. It's a sum of 100 rupees. It's a collective amount of 100 rupees. So the correction for this would be, why do you need a 100 rupees? That is the correction of the sentence. Somebody knocks at my door and says, knock, knock. Sajul, do you have something to eat? I say, I'm so sorry, bro. I don't have nothing. But I can Direct translation, I don't have nothing. My God, what a shocker. How can you use double negatives? Double negatives turn out to be positive. Therefore, you can't have, don't have nothing. So what will you say? I do not have anything. That's your correction. I don't have anything. Please don't translate Sometimes it's a blunder when people say, Mera heart khali hai. No, what is Mera heart khali hai? So you can say that he came empty handed, but you just can't say my hands are empty. Doesn't make sense at all. My hands are empty. So these translations, we just be a little careful about these translations. I'm talking about a word. And that word, believe me, I have faced this problem. Let me tell you that. Once I went to a marriage, and there, there was a salad bar. That's my favorite, you know, I love starting off with salads. So I went there and I found an elderly gentleman, suit, shoot and all that, typical. He was having salad. So I asked the gentleman, hi sir, so how's the salad? And he said to me this line, the salad is tasting good. I said, sir. Well, how is the salad tasting? You are tasting the salad, sir. He gave me one look as if he turned me into ashes and said, Hmm, now let me tell you that. What mistake did that gentleman make? And he never realized that. The point is, taste is a verb of sensation. So when we use verbs of sensation, we use it in the present tense and you are tasting the salad. The salad is not tasting something called good. So how would you say the sentence with the words of sensation? You would say, the salad tastes good. The salad tastes. Present indefinite tense. And you would say, the salad tastes good. That's what you would say in its own way. The salad tastes good. You see the verb of sensation? How is that working? Okay. It smells good. It smells good. It tastes good. The kebab looks good. The kebab looks delicious. Make, don't make that mistake. Ah, on salad. I love salads. And my boca boca, I've talked about Caesar salad, which is my favorite. But coming back to the point salad. 
somebody tells me, hey, would you like to have salad? I have cooked this salad. Excuse me, sounds good. Most people say, fine, it's nice English. I have cooked this salad. Can you cook salad? Excuse me, can you cook salad? Is it possible for you to cook? Cooking is cutting, frying, adding spices, this. You just chop, chop, chop certain vegetables, put them together, some leaves put them together, toss them and make them into a salad. So what will you say? You never said cook this salad. What will you say is that not cooked? This is not what you say. You just say, I have made this salad. Or, if you have done this, look at my action. My action verbs. Do it like this itself. So what have I done? It's called, I've tossed this salad. T-O-S-S-E-D. That would be wonderful to say, it's a tossed salad and I've tossed this salad. Continuing with grammatist. And this is my 11th question on the grammatist. Question number 11. And that's an interesting question. It says that she says she can't go in the sun. Typical. It's again that vernacular blooper. Remember that? That vernacular blooper I was talking about. She says she can't go in the sun. Which means basically in Hindi if you say this, it simply means But that's incorrect. Therefore the thing would be actually be that she says she can't go out in the sun. That will be the correction of this thing. She says she can't go out in the sun. So let's look at this question. It says, tell me, why did you do that? Okay, tell me. So insert that. This is, where is it? It seems to be a perfect sentence. But where is the mistake in this? Tell me, did you do that? So the, it's, the correction should be, it's a question. Tell me why you did that. Interesting. Look at this. Tell me why. Tell me why you did that. This is the subject has to come in. Because that's what the answer is. No? You did that. So you would say, tell me why you did that. That is the most important part of it. My next question. And here it comes up. The very interesting one. And one of the most common mistakes again. I prefer tea than coffee. So, seems... Now, this is a typical thing. Now, let's understand where is the error and why is this a typical error. You're comparing two things. So, obviously, you will try to use the word than. But the point is over here that prefer is a ratio. Prefer is a ratio. That means I like tea. I also like coffee. But I have a greater liking for tea and a lesser liking for coffee. So, therefore, the correction is a ratio. Like, for example, if I say that I have 3 is to 2. 3 is to 2. It is a ratio, no? 3 is to 2. Then we say it's a ratio. Similarly, when I'm going to use this, I'm going to write something like this. I prefer tea to coffee. That should be a correction. You should never say I prefer tea than coffee. If you really want to use than, then you can say tea is more preferable than coffee. Then in this case, it's there. Or for example, that is it. So, I have a preference for tea. That's a different thing altogether. These particular adjectives are so wonderful that you know when you, for example, what are the other adjectives that you could use with the same thinking? For example, senior. Let's look at this word. S-E-N-I-O-R. You cannot say, he's senior than me. No. He's senior to me by five years. Is junior to me by three years. That's the way it will go. Senior to, junior to, inferior to, ulterior to. These adjectives are mind-blowing. Next time, when there's a tea and a coffee in front of you, just say the right thing. I prefer tea to coffee. So remember that old beautiful line? Coffee, tea or me. 